Alright boys, tactic video for you today. This is my 4-4-2-4-2-4, the invincible tactic that I've had with my Let's Play series, the special one. I've done three seasons now with Porto. Um, half of the video is going to be highlights from the Porto season and showing you how the tactic works. And then when we're breaking down the tactic, showing you the instructions, it will actually be with my Inter Milan side. Now the tactic is the same, but... Um, in the summer, a part of the story of the special one, I have moved, I have left Portugal and I have moved to Inter Milan. So that's the reason why we've got a little bit of Inter Milan, a little bit of Porto. And if you want to see more of that series, drop subscribe so you don't miss a video every Tuesday and Sunday morning. All right, let's get into today's video. It is attacking. It's beautiful. It's direct. It's quick. Really fun to watch in the match engine. And it also has my favourite role of FM21. All right, boys, so here we are. Just started to show you the league table. We're, we're, we've done the season with Porto. Um, we finished invincible, 34 games, 34 wins, three draws, zero defeats, 132 goals scored and 15 goals conceded. A goal difference of 117. It works out at 3.88 goals per game. Not bad. Now, obviously the Portuguese level is 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 not as strong, especially sort of like in the bottom, the bottom sort of like six or seven teams. However, we did get through to a Champions League final as well, and we just bottled the final. We beat Manchester United over two legs, um, not conceding a goal. So even though it is quite an attacking tactic, I've I've put a little bit of a, a defensive foundation in there for hopefully plenty of clean sheets. Right, so here we go. Here's the tactic. It's a 4-4-2, 4, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4 We're playing with the goalkeeper on defend now. The main reason why I've not got a sweeper keeper in is because I do find they play a lot longer passes. Unless you've got a really outstanding goalkeeper who can hit long passes constantly. I do find the sweeper keeper sometimes gets caught out in terms of passing decisions. I just want him to play it simple. The idea is that we're playing not direct. We're passing into space. So we are moving the ball into sort of like attacking areas a little bit quicker. But I want to get through the thirds, I want to make sure we don't miss out this man, advanced playmaker, my favourite role of FM21. So, we've got a wing back on support, followed by two central defenders on uh, defend, no one on, no one as a ball player, I'll explain why in a minute, and full back on support, just giving us a little bit of balance, making sure, generally, in my portal save, I played a player called Javier Montero, who was a centre half slash left back, wasn't the best going forward. On the other side, I had a more of attacking fullback and I sort like an out and out wing back. So that was the reason why I did that. It also gave us a little bit of balance as well. And I've got a playing instruction of sitting narrower because if this guy is getting in here, these players are going to naturally sort of move across and he will at times make a bit of a back three. I have found that helps us out defensively pretty well. So a good solid back four in. I've not got them as ball playing defenders because I want them to pass. Keep it simple. They're playing out from defence, but I want the passes to be simple. So what I've wanted them to do is, is to pass and to do these two players here. We've got a box-to-box -box midfielder. We did have this on a deep line playmaker, but the advanced playmaker has been a fantastic role. And I've watched it in both my saves, this one and the Bilbao save where I've got an advanced playmaker. And I think the worry for a lot of people is that when you play an advanced playmaker, they just go absolutely all over the place. Now, that may be the case. If you put him on attack and he may dribble more, he'll go into different areas. But for me, and I'll show you that when we show you the highlights in a minute, advanced playmaker on support, he just kind of dictates. He'll drop off, he'll come and get the ball. He'll work as a three with your full back and your winger on this left hand side. He will generally just sit behind and support play. They don't burst into the box. So as a two and as a middle two, they're structurally defensively okay don't worry about playing an advanced playmaker spot i did have Cherky in there who obviously his passing was good his vision was good his dribbling was good and his technique was good however he had a tackling of two he had a tackling of two so you're not going to get the most out of him but what i want is his positional player if he's not going to be able to tackle and break things down he may be able to get second balls that are coming out he can recycle play and keep the play ticking on the wings, we've gone with two wingers. I have played with inside forwards at times in the Bilbao save, but with this one, 
I want to just do something a little bit different, open the play out. Now, I have played players like Cherky, Vignato, Sergio Conceição, a lot of players that can play in these two wide areas. Now, what I tend to do is make sure that, obviously, if I'm on the left, I have a left footer. On the right, I have a right footer. A lot of players now are more, it does say, that they're more comfortable playing as inside forwards. All I look for in a winger is can he cross it, can he dribble, has he got the pace? Those three things are the main three things that I look at. On this side, we've got him as a support, just because we've got the wing back on support who does like to get round and cause a little, cause a few problems on this side. So having him sitting in as a support, allowing him, allowing the wing back to get round is good. And on this side, we've got the winger on attack. I think the only difference is that they cross from the byline. Obviously, the fullback still gets up and supports when, when your winger is in sort of like the, the penalty area, sort of like 18 yards out. Your fullback will get support, get forward and support, but generally won't go around on the overlap. And up front, we've gone for a deep line forward. Now, we did have this in advance forward. And I just found at times that because the advance forward wasn't really getting into a number 10 role, I just wanted a little bit of a different variation. Now, I'm lucky that I've had Eva Nielsen at Porto, and I'll show you in a minute. In a minute. And a couple of highlights that he does do both. He does drop in on attack, though. He still works the channels and works the lines and it helps us still counter. I do like to keep two up, keep two up high. Helps with transitioning in terms of winning the ball back quickly and then and then progressing forward. Especially when you're playing against teams against a low block. You won't have many opportunities to counter. Having two players stood up there against their two centre half. Often you get space in where the, the fullbacks have sort of like moved forward. Playing instructions, we've got passing to space on, obviously we've got wingers, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to go long. Um, play out a defence, now we've said we're not putting ball playing defenders on, we've just got them on simple passes, and all they do is they put simple passes into the wingers, they put simple passes into the midfielders, obviously every now and again they'll, hot, they'll hoof a ball forward, but generally, because we've not got them trying to pass the ball do long range passes into the strikers, into the wingers, generally they just play sort of like 10-15 yard passes into these two players that we want. Now, my box-to-box -box midfielder as well, vision and passing was excellent. It wasn't just a, an up-and-down kind of Scott McTominay player. It was a player that could play an advanced playmaker. So if you're wanting this tactic to work better, try and get someone. I will show you the guy that I was using, Matthias Perez. He was my box-to-box -box midfielder, but in terms of passing, passing 16, vision 16, a very, very good midfielder. I wanted these two on the ball as much as possible. Hit crosses early. Um, just a, a personal preference that I like. We are playing with wingers as well. We've got two strikers that were three strikers. We've had also had um, we've had Ivan Ilsen, the Brazilian. We've also had Marucci. I've had a regen from Italy called Fester in my portal save, who was about six foot four. So we wanted to encourage balls in the box. Obviously, if you've got a five foot seven striker, you may need to to put on low crosses or whipped crosses. But for me, I've just got it on general mixed crosses, hit crosses early. Higher tempo. I don't think there's any necessarily need to go on to uh, the next one. Was it ex extremely? Is it extremely? Yeah, extremely high. We don't necessarily need to go up there. And we've had it on wide. We started narrow with this, but because we're very dominant, we've opened out at wide. But then I do often change it. Sometimes if we're getting caught out, the middle two just having a little bit of a struggle and a little bit maybe against a stronger side. I sometimes bring it on fairly wide or even narrow. And then even though that's about the attacking width, I do find when there's a turnover in possession, your wingers are generally a little bit closer to these two and it helps get a sort of like a bank of four in quicker. No, at nothing else in terms of dribbling more, I want my dribble, my wingers to dribble. They will naturally do it anyway. Your attacking wing back, if he's good, will naturally do it anyway. Your playmaker, I'm not necessarily wanting him to dribble more either. I want him to either pick passes out. He's the vision. He wants to pick the passes out for the wingers to run onto, the strikers to run onto. So I've not changed anything there. And then I don't. you don't necessarily need to go over the top and be more expressive. In transition, we've got obviously counter and counter press. It's the general football manager thing. We are dominant. We've got four players at the top of the pitch, sometimes even five with a box-to-box -box midfielder and a playmaker. We want to win the ball high up not give opportunities for the other teams to get out, and in particular counter against us when we're playing with a high line. Um, distribute the ball to the full-backs and centre-backs once again. I don't want the keeper going long because I always think it's a bit more of a, a lottery in terms of a 70-yard pass to the two of their big centre-halves getting the ball down and winning the ball. So I want us to roll it out and then once again we're going to work through the thirds, work through our advanced playmaker and our box-to-box -box and our wingers and then let them four feed the front two. And then I don't necessarily, I don't have distribute quickly I do like the fullbacks get our shape a little bit and then we can play out we can be quite patient sometimes it's only one or two three passes and we're in but I think just having that not tick just gives the team the opportunity to 
have a breather, get their shape, roll it out to the fullbacks, and then everyone is where we want to be, and then they can play with the patterns that they've worked on during the season. And then obviously distribution type, roll it out, and obviously that just encourages the keeper to roll it out on a constant basis. Out of possession, higher, much higher. I've just condensed the play a little bit. I don't necessarily need him to go in and press in the goalkeeper. I want him to go in to press the, the centre half as much as possible. We're forcing them outside. I wanted them to cross balls in the box. I don't want them necessarily coming through the middle. I want us to, to sit in a little bit narrower. I do like the idea of our wingers tucking in and being a little, a little bit narrower on the ball. And obviously get stuck in. Personal preference. I know everyone will probably say it in the, in the comments down below, but get stuck in. It's just a personal preference of mine. And I don't have a ridiculous amount of red cards, no more than what you would expect during the course of a season. Okay, so this was from the, uh, it was actually the Portuguese Cup final. So here we are. I'll just bring it out a bit. So there's our back four. We've got Cherky. There's advanced playmaker. Look, dropping very quite deep. This ball, this ball has just come from the fullback. Cherky dropping quite deep. Even Nielsen, the striker, look, dropping quite deep, getting involved. Advanced striker. And there's the box to box as well. And right over on the other side, keeping width, I think, which is important, especially playing against low blocks. Keeping width is vital. So even Nielsen coming short, and then obviously he's got the vision. Advance forward, likes to work on the shoulder. It's a beautiful pass, and it's a beautiful goal. There we go. Highlight there of the deep flying forward, dropping in, and then finding the advanced forward. This time, this and a half, this is what we want. Look, just gives it nice and simple. I think maybe if he was on passing into space, ball playing defender, he may would look for the front two a li little bit quicker, but he's got it into Perez, who's then got the vision. This is what I mean. We've won the ball in this area here and then two passes, bang, bang, before the other team has the opportunity to get set, get their bank of four in or bank of two banks of four in and Perez fires in. Very quick counter-attack. Centre-half playing it simple. Casu, our winger, naturally. Montero supporting. Fullback supporting. Cherky supporting as well. So there's our advanced playmaker. He's not just roaming around. He is sat in to make a two at all times. There's our winger coming in as well, so as if they stay out all the time. There's the overlap if it was needed. Wasn't needed because the advanced playmaker, Cherky, smashed it in. So this time we've gone a little bit direct into Ivan Ilsen. He's nodded it down to Kasu. There's our winger. Once again, because we've got players that are playmakers and inside forwards, they will naturally try and cut in anyway. So it does give you a nice little bit of a balance. And then once again, that is just ridiculous. That is even Nielsen at his finest. But quick, incisive counter-attacks. It's not as if, obviously, playing against low blocks is sometimes difficult. So being able to counter quickly and have the players to do it. So transitions quick, get it into the wingers, get into the, inside, into the, the advanced playmakers, get into the strikers as quickly as possible helps. Right, this is one of my favourites. So we've broke the play down here. Once again, a run. This was run from Perez who ran in. Cherky and Perez. There's Cherky, look. Getting the spare balls. Pereira, my centre house, just played a simple pass in. Little one-two. Even Nielsen working the channel that's been left by their fullback. So once again, a quick turnover in possession. We've worked the channel. Lovely pass in. Lovely finish. Great counter-attack. Nice and simple, but quick and very effective. And then the last one of the game. <clears throat> Picking up second balls is always good. Box to box midfielder. Lovely little combinations of passes. Nothing overly complicated, just waiting their time. Great movement. Once again, the winger in, getting to the byline, but he is quite narrow still. And then Maya finishes at the near post. Beautiful football. Don't worry about your wingers when, when they want to come in, they will come in. I do find as well that it's brilliant that if it's on the left hand side, your right winger at the other side will stay out nice and wide as well. Keep the keep the width. I think that's important. And obviously, when the play then comes into the middle, he can then get involved. But you do always have a little bit of an out ball and a switch because he just keeps his width on the far side. Right. One more highlight. Okay, so here we go. The ball's just coming, I think, from Cliver. He's tried to play a little ball into Tatishkinov. Hoivers, my left back, is headed down. There's my bank of follow-up. Nice and narrow. Because we're trying to force them outside so it does get the four in as quickly as we can. Conte Sao now, he is naturally left-footed. And then the transition once again. Even Ilsen this time did start short, but then he's gone long. He's worked the channel and he's got the pace to beat Jonathan Tarr. And he finishes brilliantly. Lovely transition. Lovely goal on the counter-attack. What was that? How many touches from going from one end to the other? Maybe four or five touches to get from one end to the other. Right, ball into the box this time. Hayward Bellis, my centre-half, has headed it out. 
Conceição gets there first once again, breaking from midfield. And then even Eelson again. But what is good is that the winger is in a nice narrow position. That's two times in about 10 minutes that Conceição picked up the ball in a really good area, travelled with it and played a simple pass through. Obviously, you need strikers to have a little bit of pace. And the deep line forward does like to work on the shoulder when he gets the opportunity. Another brilliant counter-attack. This is just beautiful, by the way. That's that's Cherky, one of my favourite players of FM21. If you can get hold of him and play him in the middle of the park, you'll be good to go. We get the ball down. There we are in a nice position to get second balls. And obviously then we've got the players in there. Luis got the vision, got the technique, got the passing to pick out a pass. All right. And that's it. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Link to the tactic is down below. Go use it. Go check it out. Use the advanced playmaker. You will love watching it in the match engine. I've really enjoyed watching this tactic in the match engine. Yeah. Go download it. Check it out. Let me know how it's got on. I have got a Discord as well. Discord server if you want to jump in and let me know how it's got on. Send me some screenshots. Always glad to see my tactics working for other people. Cheers, guys. See you later.